Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Olivia Towers Podcast. I really hope you enjoy this one. If you do, make sure to screenshot it and share it on social media. If it's on Instagram, it's Towers432. If it's Facebook, it's Olivia Towers Dressage. Also, if you're listening to this on iTunes, I would love you to leave a review. And I can't wait to see what you think of it. I'm so excited to introduce you to the first episode of Tack Room Tales with Towers. Um, it's a new series that I've decided to do with a podcast where I go and speak to loads of different professional riders about their story, how they got into horses, how they became a professional rider, the highs, the lows, and the lessons they've learned from them. So our first episode is with a lovely lady called Claire Gallimore and I've actually been working with her since October. She's been helping me with the TRT method which is a method that a guy called Tristan Tucker has produced and it's absolutely fantastic. It's to do with groundwork and then you can also take it into the ridden work to help the horse's relaxation and posture. I originally started it to help Wilf um, in the arena just to, like to get in a better frame of mind but I've now started doing it with all my horses and it's absolutely fascinating. And in this podcast, she does explain about it and her journey with working with Tristan and yeah, all about the method. So that's in there. And she also talks us through the incredible journey she's had with competing. Um, she's actually been on every single European youth team possible. So from ponies to juniors, young riders, and then under 25s Grand Prix, where she secured a team bronze medal. She's also got such an inspiring mindset and I hope you guys enjoy hearing about it as much as I did. So without further ado, here is the interview with Claire Gallimore. So welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Um, I think to start with, it would be really good to hear your story of like how you got into horses and yeah, how you started riding. Okay, so um, from a really young age, I was riding. My mum had a massive passion for horses and just loved horses. Mm. Didn't do it ever professionally, but just had like such a passion for horses. So through that, I um, yeah got into riding. Was ride was put on my horse when I was about two years old and Cute. led around and used to sit on her horse that she had. And so I was brought up. Did she do dressage horses. then? Like low, like low level dressage, a yeah. little bit of eventing. A yeah. little bit of everything, but just really, really loved horses. And then um, I was lucky enough, I got my first pony and spent most of the time on the floor because it just used to dump me at every <laughs> opportunity. And, um, but, I, you know, I kept going and I, yes, then I started eventing and I did pony club. Um, which was really a lot of fun, and my highlight of my summer was always going. Were you to quite brave as a kid then? Mm, no, I was never a really brave rider actually. Yeah, um, and that's why eventually when the jumps got oh, a little hi. bit bigger, I was like, mm, actually, I don't think I really enjoy this. Um, so yeah, so I did a bit of eventing, and then when I was about um, thirteen, I or twelve, I entered the talent spotting, oh, wow. um, and. Yeah, I actually won that. Oh, and that's that so was, cool. That was like the start of when I was like, okay, dressage is actually like really interesting yeah. and I'm really enjoying it because I used to find it really boring, like going around in circles. Yeah. Like, oh, this is this is really boring. So um, after that, it just started to kick off and I did birds. And then um, from when I was about 14, then it started to really uh, become a huge part of my life. And yeah. I thought, okay, maybe this is something that I want to do professionally in the future as well. That's amazing that at 14 you kind of decided. <clears throat> yeah. So, so it I, just kind of happened naturally. Yeah, just really being too scared to jump the high fences. <laughs> <laughs> and then I was like, okay, then I'm going to try dressage. And then I did the talent spotting. And then, um, yeah, I started doing ponies and started competing FEI and then rose. So um, the ponies, how old were you then when you started doing that? Um, so Leontes Double was my first like dressage pony that I got and yeah. that's the one I did the talent spotting on. So I think I was about 11 when I got that one. And oh, then wow. I got um, Gigolo who was the pony that I Legend. went to my first, yeah, best, best pony ever. I yeah. um, went to my first Europeans on. Um, so let's talk about your first Europeans way back. Yeah. It's not that far away. 
Um, how did you feel? Was it? <laughs> was it? Yeah. No way. Yeah. I didn't know this. Yeah. It so was, why was it a well, disaster? It wasn't, it wasn't a disaster, but, you know, it was... Um, I realised how how mentally unprepared I was oh, for really? a competition like that. So yeah. I I think I, I I got an okay score. Like it wasn't it wasn't totally yeah, horrific, it was but compared to, compared to how I've been like doing up into the season mm. leading up to the Europeans, then I got to the Europeans and I like it just wasn't how I wanted it to be. So um I thought, okay, well, I can't let that happen again. So I actually started having some sports psychology yeah. after that, which was... And what was the main thing you struggled with uh, like, that nerves, you felt unprepared? Definitely nerves. And, and I I kind of just got into the ring and froze a little bit and didn't really wow. know what I was doing. Because so, you would have competed a lot up to that, yeah. obviously, to get selected. But I just, like, <clears throat> actually, it was that my whole goal for the year was to get to the Europeans. Mm. And then I got to the Europeans, and then I was like, what do I do now? <laughs> I, don't, I don't actually know what to do. Like, I've reached my goal, and then I, yeah, yeah I didn't, for me, it, was, it wasn't a disaster, that's a slight exaggeration, but for me, it wasn't how I would want it, it to go, yeah. And I, I really suffered from nerves, you know, I wasn't, I, I think I was probably a bit snappy at my mum. Yeah, I, it wasn't that's like so common when people are nervous. That it, it comes bring out, out the best in yourself, yeah. No. Um, so the sports psychology so what did you do in that um, a lot of different techniques worked a lot on like breathing techniques and spoke about you know why things were happening and really started to just understand and put in put in some coping it's very young age to to um, kind of dedicate yourself to, do, to that. do that yeah but it paid off so much because the Europeans after that was yeah, actually, the best Europeans I've ever done, and I came fifth, and it was it was amazing. So, and you didn't go in like a rabbit in the head. No, exactly. And that was still ponies. Yeah, that was still ponies. So I did two years of ponies. Okay. So first year, but a huge, huge learning moment. So you're only from fourteen that. at the first one, right? Or 15? yeah, or fifteen. So you're fifteen. 15 and yeah, fifteen and sixteen. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, you did the ponies. You learned those through that, and then you got juniors after that. Yeah, so then I did juniors. Um, so then, so after ponies, I actually got um, my Grand Prix horse now, Anessa Ballerina. Wow. Yeah. Um, yeah, for ages. Yeah, so she was six years old. Um, but I actually couldn't ride her. Like, she was she was way too much horse for me. You know, I didn't have experience yeah. with horses. She was a super talented mare. It's such but a big jump from ponies to horses. So, and I thought, you know, you can ride a pony, <laughs> then you can just you can just ride a horse, and it doesn't really work like that. So um, that was also like a big learning experience yeah. for me. So then I got an older horse, um, Daniolo, who I then did the juniors on. Um, so that was so a more experienced schoolmaster yeah, type. Yeah, and that like helped you kind yeah, of for sure learn. Yeah, no, he groups. yeah he was really. He was a really sweet horse. He was a really nice temperament and he kind of gave me confidence and a lot mm. more knowledge about how I had to approach training on and the horses. And did you go to the Europeans with him? Yeah. So wow, went, you've been nailing it. <laughs> yeah, we went to Switzerland with him and that was a really nice, um, really nice event actually. And yeah, did you feel calmer really at that one? Just because Yeah, of... that was quite good actually, mentally I felt. Wow. I think I was still working with my sports psychologist at that point actually. Yeah. Um, so that was... So uh, what kind really of um, gave you the drive at such a young age to want to like be that competitive and, and, and I guess to have the motivation because at that age a lot of people are like going out, well not going out at like you know 14 but yeah going out and about seeing their friends like what gave you the motivation to kind of <clears throat> I always I've always just loved com like really love competing yeah if I want if I do something you know I want to do it a hundred percent and yeah. I want to you didn't have to force it no make try and make the most of that like opportunity that has kind of come in front of me but also a big part of that was giving myself time a little bit away from the horses as well. You know, I was very much Super someone that tried tried to keep as many doors open for as long as possible. Oh, really? Because, yeah, if I had said, okay, I can only do horses and I'm not allowed to go and see my friends or 
anything like that, then I don't think I would have come back to the horses that refreshed. So it, yeah. for me, it's really important to have That's a balance. That's so interesting. Balance you in figured things out really young. I feel like things <laughs> you figured out no. at 16, I figured out at like 24. I was like, oh. No, that is not true. Because I think a lo- in the equestrian world, a lot of people think you have to just like go, go, go. Just focus on the horses, not have anything else. And of course, you have to have disciplines, yeah. mm-hmm. like discipline. And there were times where I had to be like, you know, what, I can't, I can't go and do the, the that thing with the group yeah. of my friends, and I am going to be missing out. But you know, that's yeah. a decision that I'm happy to make, so I'm yeah. kind of prepared to do it. So after juniors, did yeah. you do young riders? Yeah. So then I did young riders. So we then sold Daniolo, and then um, in the background when I was with. Working with Daniolo, I was working with Bella, Annette Ballerina, and learning how to ride her and <laughs> learning how to get her around the arena. And I did my young riders in Vida Barn with her. So again, you did the Europeans? Yes, the Europeans. Yeah, so did you feel any pressure riders. because you had been to all the Europeans, all different ages? Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I never really... I, it was always a goal of mine to try and represent um, Great Britain on every youth like team that was Mm. always a kind of a goal in the back of my head um and pressure I more felt pressure because I knew I had a a a really nice horse and I wanted to be able to show it off to the best yeah do do the horse justice and riding to the best of my ability and you know Bella was Bella was really difficult and yeah it wasn't necessarily the best um the best test and she was really hot and she was a little bit tense mm. but you know to have gone on the journey that you know I couldn't actually get her round an arena to then be able to go um and ride a young rider test at the Europeans was and did like, you feel really much like success. pressure when you were doing the like young rider stuff did you feel like any pressure from like the selectors or your parents or yeah I think I think the most pressure always came from me or yeah on myself but of course there are like when you're given that responsibility to represent your country you know there is pressure around that yeah. scenario but um yeah I think you have to be able to put kind of tools in place to be able to manage that yeah. pressure and surround yourself with people that kind of help you be able to manage that pressure yeah. I think that's really important and then, so you did um, the Young Riders, and then you did the under twenty five. Yeah, so which is the more recent one. Yeah, so two years ago, then um, I rode on the under twenty five Grand Prix European team, and that was the yeah, average super special That's experience. That's really special because not a lot of people can make the jump from PSG to yeah, Grand Prix to that Grand quickly. Prix, exactly, and that was amazing. And there we won our team bronze, which was also like Incredible. a dream of mine. So that was. Yeah, that was amazing. That was really, really that's good. quite that's quite a lot, isn't it? But um, in that journey, it hasn't always been like oh, European teams like butterflies and roses. You know, there's been a lot of like also difficult times in in that journey as well. So yeah. that's just kind of the which we will talk the about top later. Of the iceberg. Not I'm gonna get them everything out of below. <laughs> <laughs> um. So after you finished that, and are you, when did you get out of? Being able to do the under 25s, how old are uh, you? Know? Last year was my last year, so You're I'm 20s. turning 26 in this year. Yeah. Okay, so after that, what because obviously it's a big thing, and then you're whoosh in seniors, yeah, which is like massive. terrifying, yeah. <laughs> um, so how did you go about like making that step and then um, choosing because you went to Holland to train? How did you decide to go and do that? So, about so after juniors, actually, um there was an opportunity arose that I could go out and start training in Holland um, at Academy Bartles and I always said to myself like if an opportunity came up that I could go and train abroad I really wanted to do that because I wanted to. So for young riders you trained abroad? Yeah. Okay. Yeah so I wanted to be able to experience a different culture, experience a different Mm. way of training and just immerse myself in a yeah a different a different kind of environment and in an environment that you know the Dutch and the Germans you know they're always yeah incredible incredible and as our GB as well but just kind of immerse myself in a different a different country so I decided to go out there and Bella was you know she was really tricky and I wasn't quite you know getting to grips with the way of training with her so um 
yeah, I moved out to Holland and it was going well. And, you know, of course, I, I did a good, like, Young Riders went well. Yeah. But there was always the underlying um, issue of tension with Bella, you know. Yeah. I, I couldn't really, some days it would go really good, some days it wouldn't go really good. And I ended up, um, another opportunity arose that I could actually go and train with Tristan Tucker, who has been, like, a great mentor of mine and now, yeah. like, a really good friend. And so you originally went there to help the tension with Bella with Tristan yeah yeah yeah. with Tristan yeah because I couldn't and how did you get that like opportunity if someone was like just I want to do that yeah just I was really lucky so the girl a very dear friend of mine um knew him very well and I was living with her out in Holland and she um yeah got my name to Tristan and then I stalked him for a year and sent him endless messages and was like I just want to learn yeah Yeah. and I want to jump into your training system with two feet and I want to totally immerse myself and he said and how old were you when you went to him so it must have been when I was Ooh, 22, I okay. think. 22, because I did the under 25 Grand Prix when I was training with him out there. When yeah. I was, so, but it was after Young Riders. So for anyone who doesn't know who Tristan is, yeah. um, do you want to explain a bit about him and what he does and what his method is? Yeah, okay, so um, Tristan, uh, Tristan Tucker, he's an Australian um, guy who really works on the ground and also bridging the gap between groundwork and the rhythm work and he really works with yeah the mind and the body of the horse and yeah getting them to find um relaxation yeah um in pressured environments giving the horse knowledge to be able to deal with pressured and environments. he's also a grand prix rider also a grand prix really rider, yeah international grand prix rider and has coached a lot of international riders olympians paralympians so he's a cool guy yeah and he's such a nice guy he's yeah, he's uh, a very influ- he's been very influential in uh, shaping kind of who I am today. Yeah. So, so when you started um, training with him, was it like completely different? I felt like I couldn't ride. Really? <laughs> yeah. It was really, really different. It was a totally different approach. Um, refreshing, mm. um, but really kind of breaking everything down and then building everything up in a slightly different way. Um, and that's hard to do when you're com- still competing. Yeah. Because I know when you learn yeah. something new, you feel like so lost for a while. Yeah, definitely. And I, th- But I think I got to a point, and I think sometimes you have to get to this point to be able to be willing to unravel everything. I got to a point that I was like, okay, I need to do something actually quite different because yeah. if I keep doing the same thing, I'm going to keep getting the same outcome. You had no and yeah, I was kind of like, okay, I need to make a big change or I just accept this is how it's going to be forever. Yeah. And I wasn't really prepared to do that. So, um, yeah, I with the support of my mum being like, okay, I think you should do this. I was like, okay, I'm going to... And when you started, did you always know that you were going to kind of come over and teach it? No, that was never, that was never really kind of the plan. I just knew that once I started working in that way, I wanted to, one, be able to share all the knowledge that I had been lucky enough to be exposed to. Yeah, this is amazing. Yeah, by being in his kind of presence for like three years every day. I thought, gosh, this is going to help so many other people. I want to be able to share this knowledge. Um, and all the second thing was, is once I trained in this way, I, there was no other way that I was yeah, going, gonna, to going to train. So I wanted, yeah, it just become became part of what I was teaching other people as well. It's amazing. Yeah. Um, so... If people didn't understand, because a lot of people ask me about the TRT method. Yeah. Can you kind of explain like, exactly what the goal is that you're trying to do with horses? Yeah. Because a lot of people think it's like desensitising them. Yeah, it's definitely not desensitising them. You know, you can't ride a Grand Prix or you can't ride a prelim or an intro with a horse that is desensitised to the aids. Mm. What it is, is it's basically teaching the horse how they can deal with pressure and pressure being an umbrella term you know whatever that pressure is yeah it doesn't matter but the horse has knowledge about how it's got to deal um, with itself in those certain situations and the rider and the handler of the horse also has tools Mm. to be able to turn maybe a negative situation 
um, into a positive one. So a horse might get tense, but then the rider or the handler is able to, to turn that situation actually into a place of yeah. rest and relaxation for that horse. And if you can, I know obviously it's you can't like properly explain yeah. because you'd need to kind of demo it. Yeah. But the stages of say you get a horse that's never done it, so yeah. then how do you go from that to then getting it in the arena? So it's a, I think it's important for people to understand that it's not a quick fix. Mm. You know, no one goes to a trainer is like, okay, I want you to train my horse to Grand Prix in one day. Yeah. Because well, some people do. <laughs> okay, maybe some people do. It's not realistic. <laughs> yeah, it's totally not realistic. And I think the most important thing for people to understand is it really is a process and it takes time and um it's a, a way of being with the horse as well yeah you know? so you start really basic from just moving their legs around and getting them to actually think about what's happening in their body rather than what's going on kind of elsewhere and then you build up once they're able to find that state of relaxation mm. you then start to test it with um, different pressures whatever those pressures might be plastic bag flag clappers umbrella yeah so, so it's not actually the object that matters it's totally irrelevant it could be a chainsaw it could be a digger it could be like it's whatever you want those pressures to be um and then you start to bridge that gap um put a saddle and a bridle on do everything the same but with the bridle and the saddle mm. on and then you introduce the rider and you start to build up from that point and then you add the different movements and maybe the movements that the horse finds difficult you start to work um in that way with the different pressures and the different patterns through yeah. the body and but then it's... once they kind of get used to it you were saying earlier like in the test you can then yeah you give can then aid. fine tune it so like with bella now you know i've been working with her like this for about five five years and it's a very minimal thing that I now have to do in order for her to be able to yeah. find that place of rest and relaxation. So you don't have to be on the outside of the arena like with a plastic bag? Like, no, 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 definitely, <laughs> definitely not. Because, you know, that's not that's real allowed. life. And yeah. you have, like, the, the way of training that Tristan has taught me is really um, you're able to transfer it to the competition arena. And I think, you know, fundamentally that is the m most important thing. You need to have a system that you're able to do in the, in the competition arena, otherwise it's, it's, so it's not clever. really gonna work. So. It's so clever. So you trained with Tristan for three years and then how did you decide to move back to the UK? So I got to a point where I was like, okay, I'm either gonna stay in Holland for the rest of my life or I'm gonna come back. And I always said from the beginning, like I'm gonna come back to England. That was always a plan and I'm mm -hmm. quite a person that, okay, if I say I'm gonna do something, yeah. it might not happen when it was meant to happen but I will eventually end up doing it and yeah I decided then to bring all the knowledge that I learned and I decided to come back to England and I'm, I'm so glad I had um, yeah I have done that actually it's yeah, yeah England is home back. and um yeah that's never really going to change mm. um, and Holland is still you know really really close it's 40 minutes on a plane so yeah I can knit back over. if I want to yeah. Holland is close. <laughs> yeah. it um, is pretty close so yeah you came home and then yeah. how did you go about like building up the client bases that you have now say like with the teaching but also with the um groundwork because that's quite a it's it's hard isn't it within the question work sometimes the groundwork's looked at a bit as like it's very different. like yeah. handy. how did you kind of get riders to understand like this can help you in so um yeah my good friend Alice Oppenheimer she was um really she asked me when I first came over um to help her with one of her horses that she was struggling a little bit with with tension and it, she knew it was a super talented horse but yeah it couldn't show its full ability because tension was getting in the way yeah um and I started working with her and it's worked because it does work <laughs> and she's um yeah she's really helped helped me kind of spread the, the proof word. is in the pudding sort yeah, of thing yeah exactly and I just started working with people and helping people and then they started to talk and word of mouth has mm, honestly been the best way the best way um because people experience it and then they say gosh this really works like you should try it mm. and um yeah I've been really fortunate that's such enough. a good way because a lot of people ask me like how do you build up a client basis and there's no like secret source no I think it's word of mouth and like 
really believing in what you're teaching. A hundred percent. Because if you were trying to sell something, you're like, mm, I'm and I'm sure. so passionate, and I like yeah. so fundamentally believe that this is such a great tool to be able to add into your toolkit of training horses. You know, yeah. so I want to spread that word, and yeah, people once they see it working and they feel the difference, then yeah, they start talking and. The horse world is a small world, so yeah, then, it is. Um, yeah, the message soon, soon starts to kind of seep to different areas of the country. Um, right, so what I want to talk to you about now is not, the, I don't want to say like the negative things, because it's not, because obviously you learned so much yeah. from it, but the things like that I guess people are most curious about. So the first one is what you've had to sacrifice to kind of get where you've got and, um, you know, achieve all you've achieved, because... Yeah. I think with everything there comes sacrifice yeah. and I think it's important for people to kind of get that. So what yeah. would you say the main things were that I've sacrificed? Cool. It's Big funny question. because I don't, in my head, I don't see it as a sacrifice no. because I've then you been able to, to do, do something. Yeah. First of all, I've wanted to be able, I, I've wanted to do it. So mm. I have done it. Um, but I've also, um, chosen made a decision that then allows me to do something else so therefore it's not a sacrifice because yeah. it, it's more of a choice um, yeah. but of course you know there's there's certain things that you won't be able to go to or there'll be certain things that you'll miss out on you know a lot of my friends are um have lived in London and can very mm. easily meet up after work and you know that's something that I, yeah. I'm more dipping and out of rather than is my like way of life. Did you find that harder when you were younger and you feel like it's got easier or have you always kind of just known that that's a choice you wanted to make? Yeah, I think that has always just been a choice. And I, I know that if I made the choice to do horses professionally that that would be how it was. You know, yeah. so that was a choice that I, I didn't have to make that choice, but I, yeah. I wanted to and I decided to. Um, so a sacrifice... I, yeah, I suppose missing out on things that you would have liked to be able to have done. But on the flip side, I was then able to yeah. do things that other people haven't been able to do because I yeah. made that choice. So, um, yeah, I don't really feel like I've made... Like, there's nothing that I've thought, oh my gosh, I really... And I'm just going to play the devil advocate here, right? Okay. Because imagine you hadn't had the success you had and yeah. you'd still given all that up. Yeah. Would there be part of you that would be like, oh was this worth it or like it still doesn't matter to you oh good question Ooh. good question Deep one. um i i don't may maybe maybe there would but i also think that yeah it's just a little bit how you choose to look at it yeah because if i okay what is success is what you decide mm -hmm. success is you know so to say i when on you know um five european teams okay that is a success but there were a lot of little successes along the way that yeah. maybe even felt better than getting to that success of being on the european and team. by the sounds of it you're really passionate about <laughs> i don't want to say like the spiritual side of it but like the understanding horses working with horses yeah so of it's course, not necessarily the winning successes. yeah and it was really interesting when i worked with um, my sports psychologist because you know whether you go to that competition and you get 70% or you get 59% mm. the next day you will be doing exactly the same thing yeah. whether you get 70% or you get 59% so that is also how how I look at yeah. my like successes or not successes is yeah. the next step is going to be the same whether you win or you don't win yeah. you know so that's a little bit it's important bit to remember there's always mindset. another show it's, even if it was like say the Europeans yeah no one's saying this is the last show of your career no even exactly. if it's the, on the horse like that may yeah. be their last show but there's always another time and that's so important and to if I got to the Europeans or I didn't get to the Europeans I would still be going on on the same journey to yeah that's the great thing about riding that people do it for such a long time it's not like boxing or whatever like gymnastics you have to be young to do it yeah that's the thing we're super lucky sport. we're so so lucky i think at the london olympics there was a rider who was like 70 no, no, old. The, was it the japanese yeah one? the japanese it was like it's so inspiring and i think yeah with more time of course you gain more knowledge and more experience and that's something that you can't rush and with mm. horses is so important as well yeah. so 
And earlier you spoke about like the hard times when you were going through, um, you know, your journey with the horses. Yeah. Is there anything like specifically you remember being really difficult? I think it was, um, especially with Bella, because I knew I had a really talented horse Mm -hmm. and people also knew I had a really talented Mm -hmm. horse. And it was the fact that I didn't necessarily feel I was doing that horse justice, but that was also because I didn't really have the answers about how I could do the like Bella justice you know because yeah yeah, as I said she was really tense and you didn't have the tools I didn't have the tools and that was my biggest um kind of learning experience from going to Tristan is I suddenly had the tools that I felt Mm. I had needed for so long um and that was like a really a really great moment because then I felt that I could give knowledge to Bella to make her the best horse that she could be and I think that was a really hard time because I felt like I was just banging my head against a wall because I didn't know what else to do and I think that's really hard if you have a plan and you have an action and you have tools to be able to um, make a situation better Mm. then I don't think you ever get really really like low but if you don't have those answers or those tools I think that's when it can get into a really negative spiral and then you're like I give up because yeah. I don't actually know what else I can do. And I think it's really interesting. You said last time you were here, like, about you not being, like, a ridiculously brave rider. And I think it's amazing to watch you with, like, the horses on the ground are, like, mental. And you're like, <laughs> what? Like, how? Because you're so confident with it. But I think it's that you know what to do in a situation. Yeah, and I have kind of, the tools. You have yeah. the tools. And that, I think, is so refreshing because so many people message me like I feel a dead end yeah and sometimes it's not spoken about there are other options yeah definitely Um, and I think sometimes it's just it's trying something new it's being open-minded it's it's not judging yeah it's being open-minded I think if you if you stay open-minded then you'll always continue to Mm. learn and then I think you know have you had any like negative um not feedback, but people being a bit negative about what you do, say, um, at competitions. Because I went to a competition and I was doing it and I was a bit nervous about people kind of being like, what on earth? Yeah. Have you felt any, like, negativity um, with that? I think there's always going to be people that have um, opinions about what, what you're doing and, mm. you know, they can have those opinions. Um, and I think people sometimes see um, they focus on the flag or the plastic bag or you know the the those aspects of rather the training yeah rather than actually what the end goal is um but actually for me I don't it doesn't really affect me because Mm. I yeah believe in it so much and I'm helping other people and other people are are, uh, yeah know that it works as well yeah so I think silent confidence yeah and I think that that is People are always going to have opinions about about yeah. what you do, but if you think it's the right thing and it's working for you, then I like that. I'm yeah. going to remember that next time I do it. Yeah. Um. Uh. One of the last questions I have for you is: Who's been your biggest inspiration throughout your riding career? Um. Well, I have to. Yeah, I have to say Tristan, actually. Like, I never... It was really funny. When I was growing up, it's not that I had necessarily one person yeah. who I was like, that's that's who I who I want Look to be. To. Um, I would say... It's a good thing, though, because yeah. if you try and ride like someone, you then you're not your being yourself. Rider. Yeah, I think I've had people that have have influenced me and those are the people that then I like look Mm. up to and inspire to be um to be like um and Tristan is definitely someone who who has been incredibly influential um in my life and also I've started training with um Charlotte now and you know I have the utmost respect for her as well she's done incredible ridiculously incredible things and it's inspiring to be with someone um and around someone that has achieved what she has achieved as well pushes you to like new new yeah exactly for sure cool so my last question is um you have to think about this hypothetically okay (laughs) imagine you could ring your younger self yeah so let's say 16 yeah um and you need to give them three bits of solid advice yeah what would you say to them um, what would I say to them? I like this one. Yeah, it's gets a good you thinking. One. Really gets you thinking. <laughs> I would 
first, the best bit of advice um, I would say is surround yourself with good mm. people. That is the the um, motto that I really try and live live so by. True. Surround yourself with good people that bring out like your best self. That's yeah. definitely um, would be my number one. Number two is stay open minded because if you stay open minded then you're always going to be putting yourself in positions to learn more yeah. and develop yourself and i think my third one would be is remember it's never too late to make a change you know like that don't don't think you're past the point of not being able to turn a situation yeah. around you know you um your horse and you are never too old to stop learning and you can always make you a can decision. teach an old dog new tricks 100 yeah it's never too late i love that wicked right this has been amazing um if people want to follow you or get in touch with you and talk to you about it how do they get you so um i have an instagram page and a facebook page claire gallimore dressage um, and then I also have a website, Um And then you can find out contact details for um, upcoming clinics and follow a little bit my journey with my horses through my social media as well. Amazing. Cool. Thank you so much for no doing worries. this. Thank so you good. so much for having me. So there you have it, guys. Our first episode of Taproom Tales of Towers. I really hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Claire is absolutely incredible she's so inspiring so fascinating and um yeah if you guys did enjoy it make sure to tag us on social media so we can hear what you thought um claire's instagram is claire gallimore dressage and mine is towers 432 and yeah i just can't wait to hear what you guys thought and i'm so excited to bring more episodes to you guys interview more people and just open up the equestrian world so uh yeah i'll see you for the next one Thank you.